please remember to like and subscribe. Hi, my name is Jay with Kinetic. And I'm Justin with Immersive. And today we're going to be showing you the differences between the Yamaha QL series and the Yamaha CL series. At this point, if you could please pause the video and take a look at the table of contents. As this video is pretty vast and a lot of the content may be something you're already familiar with, you could skip directly to the timestamp associated with the content you wish to view. The timestamps are also available in the description of this video below. Looking at the front, using standard US Imperial units, the CL is a little over 41 inches long by 26 inches wide by 11 and a half inches tall. Now taking our attention to the QL, we can see that it is 32 inches long by 22 inches wide and the height is just a little over 10 and a half inches. One of the first things we notice on the CL5 is a built-in meter bridge. This meter bridge reflects the output levels for all 24 mixes, all eight matrixes, the stereo bus, and the mono and Q bus. Now if we switch over to the QL5, you're going to see there is no built-in meter bridge. There is a meter section, and we'll go into that later. Next to the meter bridge on the CL, we see four user-defined knobs. On the QL, there are no physical user-defined knobs, but there is the touch and turn knob, which affects most parameters on the screen, and four soft user-defined controllable knobs, which are controlled by the touch and turn knob. As far as physical faders, both consoles have 34, except for the layout of those greatly varies. The CL is broken into three sections, section A, B, and C. Section A to the far left has a bank of 16 faders and two custom groups within A. B is our central logic group. There is one custom there. This would be familiar to the M7 users. And C, we have another group of eight, but we have six custom layers associated with that. So the flexibility is great. As far as user-defined keys are concerned, the QL5 has 12 physical user-defined buttons. The CL has 16. The CL also offers physical scene memory buttons for store, recall, up and down scene, undo, and preview. The QL series consoles do not offer these physical buttons yet the scene menu within the GUIs are identical. Another addition to the CL is we do have an assigned knob per channel strip. This dedicated knob can be set to gain, pan, or the assign function. You can set it to a variety of user-defined properties. The CL offers 34 of these user-defined knobs above each of the 34 channels. The QL series does not offer these knobs on their channel strips. The CL and the QL both have dedicated headphone outputs attached to the monitoring section with a physical knob. Unlike the QL, the CL also has a talkback section with a microphone XLR input and a dedicated gain knob for said input. Speaking about monitoring, the CL offers a monitor level physical knob, whereas the QL does not. It's starting to become a pattern that we could see the CL has more physical knobs, encoders, and buttons compared to the QL, which is more soft knob based. The CL, as we see here in the mix matrix section, has individual buttons for the mix and matrix selection and physical encoders to send the channel or mix into the matrix or mix. The QL does not have these physical encoders, but all of the same processes can be done with soft knobs. Once again, we see more physical encoders on the CL, this time in the EQ section. Each frequency range, being high, high mid, low mid, and low, has three physical encoders for Q, frequency, and gain. Now looking at the QL, we see three physical encoders compared to 12 physical encoders for the EQ section. And they pretty much do the same thing here. They just give you four buttons to bank select between frequency ranges being low, low mid, high mid, and high. Again, you're doing the same thing. You just have more encoders on the CL. I apologize for the lack of brightness on this shot, but I wanted you guys to see 
that the gain, dynamic section, pan, and high pass filter sections are identical between both consoles. Now swinging around and taking a look at the back, this is where the QL5 actually starts to do a little better than the CL, the physical I.O. The QL5 has 32 physical preamp XLR inputs on the back. The CL5 only has 8. The QL5 has 16 Omni outputs. The CL only has 8. If you're wondering why there is a broken XLR in the QL5, that's because somebody was trying to be nice and set up the console for me and dropped it on a tour stop. I have yet to get it out. Now, going from left to right, both consoles have MIDI in and out. Both consoles have word clock, 75 ohm connection, BNC in and out, general purpose input connection, and an AES digital output. The QL5 only has two card slots, as you can see in the horizontal positions, where the CL5 has three vertical card slot positions. They both have a Dante hookup for primary and secondary networks. They both have a LAN input. The CL5 has three LAMP connection ports, where the QL5 only has two. Another, this is subjective, but kind of beneficial addition the CL has over the QL is the DC power. There is a backup power supply connection on the CL. There is no backup DC power supply connection on the QL. This is probably the largest selling point for the CL over the QL. If, if I was to pick one thing that I think is just the greatest over it, the CL has 24 mixes. 16 are labeled mix, and then eight are labeled effects. But the eight that are labeled effects, they're still mixes. So you get 24 mixes and eight matrix buses. And on the QL5, you only get 16 mixes and still eight matrixes again. So you get eight matrix on each console, but you get 24 mixes on the CL opposed to only 16 mixes on the QL. Looking at it again, there's 16 mixes, there's eight more labeled effects, and then the eight matrixes. It even says it in the tabs, mix one through 16, mix 17 through 24. Whereas this just says mix and matrix. If you're wondering what the CL means, it's central logic, and if you're familiar with the M7 CL series, then you're familiar with the central logic area here, which occupies bank B. If you look at the QL, the QL stands for quintessential. All you need, no bells and whistles. So, if I have home set to a user-defined key, which I have here, and I have it set to toggle, so it's going to go between the channel overview and the selected channel screen, which is here, if I toggle it, as you can see, the screen is only going to represent what's in the central logic system, hence Yamaha CL. So 1 through 8, because that's what's selected in my central logic system. If I select 11, 13, 16, whatever, this isn't changing right there. It's only going to reflect what's changing if I'm in the channel overview section. Now, with the QL, I have the same toggle set up between home. Now, here... 1 through 8 is there, but there's no central logic system on the QL. So if I select 10, it's now going to go to that next bank of 8, 17, that bank, 25, that bank. So that is a difference in the software. Pop it on order real quick. So there's not many differences to the software, but I am trying to pick out the little ones here or there that matter. All right, so looking at the front menu, the GUIs are almost identical, except for the bottom part right here. Rather than a custom knob section, we have this eight bank here, and whatever channel is selected within that eight bank. Now, if I have a channel outside of that eight bank selected, it's not going to pop up in there, but anything within that eight bank we have quick control of. If I tap that, like number three, 
Now I can go straight into the patch menu for that. That's pretty cool. Everything else at this point is virtually identical. Now this is something I wanted to mention that I forgot to when I first filmed this video, so I'm coming back and addressing it now. And it's a little bit of an odd spot, but I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't mention it. And that is a little difference between the CL and QL and how the input patching works while using Dante Controller at the same time. I don't have a picture of Dante Controller, but I could talk you through it. Essentially, if I patch an input in through Dante Controller, on the CL, it goes directly to the channel and is already patched and ready for me. Where the QL, there's the extra step of, yes, it's patched and everything's right, but I still have to go in on the channel and actually click the input patch. So it's a little difference. It just saves you one step. Everything else at this point is virtually identical. Now, when we go into the rack, you're gonna notice that you have a separate graphic EQ tab the QL does not have. The QL only has one tab. Here, you have two. So, looking at it again in greater detail, the CL has two graphic EQ rack tabs with eight spaces each, and the QL only has one graphic EQ tab with eight rack spaces in that. Now, looking at them side by side, we can see what can be mounted into each rack. In the Graphic EQ tab, only Graphic EQs can be mounted into those slots except for the Auto Mixer. And it should be noted that the Auto Mixer, 16 channel and 8 channel, can only be mounted in rack space number 1. In the Effects tab, what can be mounted in the racks is all the same EQs you could before, plus effects. It should be noted though that you cannot mount your Auto Mixer in any of these spaces. It can be only mounted in rack space number one in the very first graphic EQ tab. In the premium rack section, you can only mount the premium rack devices, nothing else. This will be gone through in further detail. So looking inside the premium rack, we can only mount premium rack devices. And if you look between the CL on the left and the QL on the right, the premium rack devices are identical. Jumping back to rack tab one, the graphic EQ tab, we could see that in rack space one, this is where we mount our Dugan. And if you look between the CL and the QL, these are identical. The benefit though with the CL is you have one more graphic EQ tab. So as you can only mount the Dugan in the graphic EQ slot one in tab one on the QL, you're eating a substantial amount of graphic EQ rack spaces. Now you can add graphic EQs into the effects tab when you have a pretty big show, these start to get eaten up quick, so it's something to be conscious of. If we look at the setup menus on both consoles, they are identical. The only differences here is if you tap the user setup button in the top left. If you tap that button and open it up, you're going to see that there is more flexibility as far as customization. The CL has the assignable encoder on the top of each channel strip. More user defined keys, and more custom fader banks. Obviously, we discussed this earlier, the custom fader banks, you have much more flexibility on the CL compared to the QL. This is what that menu looks like compared to the QL. Keep set up. If you look here, we have user defined knobs. Now these, between both consoles, are identical other than the fact that on the QL it is a soft knob and on the CL it is a physical knob. Now the CL has an assignable encoder. If you look here these encoders above each channel strip can be gain, pan, or if I have a sign selected they can be whatever feature is that whatever feature is within this menu. Now, looking at our custom fader banks, on the CL, you can see that there is a lot of flexibility here. As it's based on the central logic platform, the B section, which is the center of the console, has eight faders, and there's only one custom fader bank for that. The left side, which is our A bank, you have two. Each one, each custom group, is 16 faders. 
and then you have the C bank, which is all the way on the right, and you have eight faders representing each one of those banks. Now, comparing the QL's custom fader bank section in disregard to the master section, you have four custom fader banks, B1, 2, 3, and 4, each occupying all 32 channels per bank. The CL, the very first bank, bank A, this 16 over here, within that DCA group, will modify. So I press DCA1, and this spills. DCA2, 3, whatever's in there. And if I tap the DCA, I return. Now, this can happen at any point. If I have the DCA as a custom button, if I have it in my custom fader bank, at any point, if I select the select key on a DCA group, the first 16 channels are going to spill what is inside of that DCA. In comparison, we could see with the QL, when I tap the select button on the DCA group, nothing spills over. I think Yamaha did this not to just take away a feature on the QL, but because it might become cluttered because there's no sections on the QL, it's just your 32 faders. Whereas the CL is based on the central logic platform where there's a level of division. So, should you buy the CL or the QL? Well, really it's a matter of its intended use. If you're using it in a broadcast environment with a significant amount of mixes, I would recommend the CL. Also, I can tell you from looking at hundreds of riders, almost all the riders are going to say Yamaha, Yamaha CL OK. They might say M7 LS9 not OK, QL5 to be discussed, but they usually will always name the CL console on there. It'll say something like Digico SD7 preferred Yamaha CL5 OK. If you're in the AV company kind of end of things, buy the QL. You're going to save yourself a significant amount of money. It's going to have a lot more I.O. on it. It's going to do almost everything the CL can, minus, of course, the physical knobs, minus one rack space. But it's a quintessential scaled-down version. So for most things, the QL is going to be fine. Again, it depends. Are you honoring riders? Are you in a broadcast environment? What's the level you're trying to achieve? Thanks again for watching. Please remember to subscribe so I can continue making these videos. Have a great day.